Is anybody afraid what's going to happen in our country? Listen, what's going to happen is going to happen. Some things are going to be unveiled. You know, this year's a year of focus. We need to focus on what Jesus has us doing, not what the world's doing. Let's get our eyes off the world and on him. That's going to change everything. Off the world and on him. I want to ask you guys this morning, how's your life going? How's your way working for you this morning? How's your way working out? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty tough. Are your dreams coming true? The dreams that you dreamed as a child all the way up until now, are they coming true? Some yes, some no. I think it's because of the alignment that we have some of our things that we're not in line with how we need to be in line. How's your relationships with friends, family, your spouses? How are your relationships going? What about your jobs? How are your jobs going? How are you guys handling your job situation? And then how about your walk with Jesus? How's that going? We're going to find out today. Guys, it's okay to dream. I mean, dream on, dream big, dream powerful, dream amazing things. I'm a dreamer. You guys know that. There's a song about that. I'm a dreamer. I really am a dreamer. I mean, I dream big. I mean, you guys, I see what's going on here. I, I'm past this. I'm on to the next step in my mind, where we're going, what God's doing. I'm clear out of here. I mean, this place is youth center now. I'm, I'm somewhere else. And I feel like that, that, that I, because I'm a dreamer, God chose me for a position like this. Because I dream. And because I dream big. Attempt great things for God and expect great things from God. It is so true to do those things. Jesus has a dream for each and every one of you. He has a dream for each and every one of you. But we must line ours up with his. We must line everything up with what he has for us. Jeremiah 29, 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity. To give you a future of hope. Psalms 37, 4 says this. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your hearts. Delight yourself in the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your hearts. That's Psalms 37.4. I know I'm not giving you enough time to turn there. But I think my guy on the screen is pretty fast. He don't even know what I'm putting up here. But he's getting pretty quick at it. Thanks, Joseph. <laughs> Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first. First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. All of what? All of the good relationships that you desire. The dreams that you have. The jobs that you want and he wants for you. I've been thinking about the passage. You know, Jesus told us how to pray. He said, our father was art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive those who debt against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. And I've been thinking about that verse. You know, we talked about kingdom culture, culture of honor. But I feel like it's even deeper than that. What he's saying, when he's saying heaven on earth, He's talking about a relationship. He wants us to have the same relationship here that we're going to have there. To where we walk in the relationship that he has for us in heaven now. Loving him the way that we're going to love him then now. Interacting with him the way we're going to be there now. And everything that we do, and everything that we do should line up to what he has for us. You know, I've had dreams myself because I'm a dreamer. I remember dreaming when I was young. I dreamed I was going to be a rock star. I didn't quite make it. 
But <laughs> I did get to perform, and I did have, I get to play guitar, about 800 or so people singing to play Bon Jovi living on a prayer. I had hair down to here. You know, it was, it was pretty crazy times. But it wasn't what God had for me. It just wasn't what he had for me at all. I remember there was a time I wanted to be a cowboy. And I put my cowboy hat on. I, had, I, I mean, I had this Stetson hat. It was, it was custom made. It was, it was a nice hat. I don't know what ever happened to it. Probably mold and got thrown away. But um, I had seven horses, had a farm, loved it, loved it. But it wasn't what God had for me. It wasn't. I wanted to be a farmer. I did farm when I was six years, or seven years old, all the way up to I was 16. Start out pulling weeds out bean fields and then work for the farmer all the way up until then. And then again, when I was 21, I worked on a farm again. Thought, man, I'm going to be a farmer. I loved it. It, 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 it like made, it did something to me. I think every kid should at least farm for one year. It, it, it'll shape them. It'll shape them a little bit different than video games. Video games are shaping them a whole different direction than they need to be going. But I went from one thing to another to another to another, seeking something. In all that, I was searching for something. How many of you have been from one thing to another to another to another? I'm going to turn around because I know there's some lying going on out there with no hands coming up. And so, no, really, we've all tried these different things when we were younger and just couldn't figure out what it was that we wanted out of life. You know, we couldn't figure it out. It is Jesus. He's the ultimate thing that we really desired through all that time, through all that searching in and out of jobs, up and down, searching for him. And finally, here I am where he called me to be. It took me 50 years to get here. 48 because it was two years old or two years old, but it took me that long to get where he wanted me to be. <laughs> But I went through a lot of trials and tribulations, and it molded me. And he used every bit of that to bring me to this point. Everything that I had ever went through, he used it for the good, for his good, to bring me to where I am now. That we can be where we are now, right now, in ministry. It's so amazing. It's all about him. I'm ever drawing closer and deeper in relationship with him. I want you guys to know that as your pastor, I'm ever drawing closer and deeper. What I'm doing right now for 2021, and I've did it for the past five years, I just know a little bit more about it now. The things that are weighing me down, I'm getting rid of. The things that are burning up my time, I'm getting rid of. They might be good, but it's less time that I get to spend with Jesus, the one who died for me, the one who created me, the one who loves me. And I'm going to meet him one day again face to face. Already met him once, and I'm going to meet him again in person face to face. It's going to be amazing. What about your job? Are you in a job that you feel like you're just stuck because of your lack of education or because of, you know, whatever? Wisdom, whatever. Are you stuck at a job that you don't want to be at, but you're just stuck there? Or you could be in a job that you're making so much money and you want to step down a notch. You don't know how to step down a notch because you get yourself so in so much debt that you can't step down. So you got to stay there at that job that you hate. God has a job for each and every one of us that's going to line up with his will. I promise you. I'm not saying quit your job, but I'm saying ask him what he wants you to do. Ask him what he has for you. What? It's going to align with what he has. I'm, I promise you, it's going to change things. In your relationships. It's so important. It's so important that we develop relationships. In our job, God is going to, if we're in the right place, God is going to give us an opportunity to build relationships either on a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a corporate basis. I get to do both, and it's just amazing. And I love every bit of it. But the relationships that he has for you are waiting. There are people, as I've said before, waiting on you.
to be in right relationship with him. And when you get in that right relationship with Jesus, watch what happens. It's going to be breathtaking. It's going to be beautiful and it's going to be amazing. Being in right relationship. Just when you think you can't do it. Tammy, I didn't sleep very good last night either. Not fearful, but the things that, that are in front of us. Challenging. But we can get past it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ, which gives me strength. And in every situation, we can do that. In all things, through Christ, we can have the strength to do anything, to accomplish anything, to go anywhere, to be anything that we want to be in line with him. Guys, listen. This is so important that we are lining up right now. We're stepping in. Listen, we're stepping into something we've never seen we're stepping into an era that we've never seen. We've never seen it. It's amazing times to me. I mean, I think it's just amazing. I mean, I think we're, it's like we're going to be in the history books. I mean, if, they're, if, if, the, if the Lord don't come before them, but they don't jack them up. And, but we're going to be in some books somewhere. But uh, it's going to be amazing. But what God is doing right now in, in, in America, I mean, don't, don't downplay it. Listen, things have to be exposed and uncovered in order for the right things. This is going to happen. Things are going to be exposed and, and uncovered. Listen, if, 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 if um, the presidency didn't turn out the way that you want it to, know this. Christ is stepping in. He's our president. He's our God. He's our leader. He's the one that paid the price for us that we would not have to go through some things that... that that we go through. And some of the things that you go through is because of a lack of a relationship with him. How are your relationships? How are your relationships with your friends, with your families, with your spouses? Some of us don't even know how to have a good relationship. I remember there was a time I didn't know how to develop a relationship or have a good relationship. You know, it was always just a turnoff or whatever. And now I have more than probably I need. <laughs> but i um, working on that too. And... Uh, I mean, I want to be friends, but I might not be able to. I want to be friends with you if the Lord says to be friends with you on an intimate level. Because I'm not made to be friends with everybody. If I was friends with everybody in here, like, like friends, friends, like, like one-on-one -on -one friends, I wouldn't have no time to do anything. So let's, let's, let's narrow that down. You know, um, some of us have 4,000 friends on Facebook. Really? Really? And some of you keep up with those 4,000 friends, and that's what's blogging your brain out. That's what's, I mean, man, I'm running off a DOS system here, and if I had 20 friends that I kept up with on Facebook, it would overload my system. Some of you got bigger brains than me, I guess. I don't know. But this is how to have a good relationship. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says this. Do not be bound together, and I'm using NASB with this. Do not be bound together with unbelievers. For what partnership have righteousness and lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light and darkness? This is not saying don't hang around non-Christians. This is saying don't bind yourself with a non-Christian. Or someone don't believe like you believe in kingdom culture. Or in Jesus. Don't bind yourself with those people. Yes, hang around them, bring them into the fold, bring them in until you, they can be in a place that you could possibly be bound with them. But don't do it prematurely because it'll get you in trouble. It'll get you in a lot of trouble. There's so many people that have bound themselves in relationships and they wasn't supposed to. And now they're stuck or they feel like they're stuck in that relationship. When it comes to a marriage, you fight for that marriage. You fight tooth and nail to save that marriage. I mean it. When it comes to friendships, they can come and go. Family, you fight for that relationship. But friendships, people that weigh you down. Behold, old things pass away, all things become new. What do you think that means when you get saved? If your friends don't come in alignment with where you just stepped into with Jesus Christ... 
It's okay. Love them, but put them away in a loving way and say, hey, I can't do this no more. Don't condemn them. Don't down them. Don't tear them apart, but just, just step away. It'll happen. All things become new. Ephesians 4, 23 says, 32 says this, Be kind one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also forgave you. He died and forgave you. 1 Thessalonians 5, 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another, just as you are being built up. You're being built up. And so as you're being built up, build someone else up beside you. When they get down, you become a powerful person for when they come down, you can build them back up and you can lift them back up. My vision for this year was that engine that God showed me. That every person in the, in the body of Christ, if you set a powerful person underneath you, when you're down, you're going to go back up. And I was watching this. And I was watching as he was showing me this vision of this engine running. And there were some dead cylinders. And it wasn't running very well. It was, if you ever had a car that did that, you just run on one leg. You know, you like run on four cylinders. It's a V8. It's not good. Slug. It's got stuff in it, build in it, junk in it. You got to clean that out. You got to clean the carburetors out. You got to clean all that stuff out. And then you got to maybe rebuild it. There might be some broken parts in there. But once you rebuild that engine, watch how it runs. Watch how it goes. And when the church, when the body of Christ does the same thing, when everyone sets a powerful person underneath them, and when that person gets down, they're going to come right back up. Down, they're going to come right back up. Down, they're going to come right back up. And in that, the engine is just going to be like this. And it's going to go smooth, and it's going to go smooth, and it's going to go smooth. The whole body, if the whole body of Christ would do that, set a powerful person under them, I think that this would be a super, super amazing running machine. That God has. Building relationships. Ephesians 5.33 Nevertheless, each other among you also is to love his own wife even as himself. Let me stop there. Husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives. If you wine and dine yourself, you wine and dine your wife. If you buy things for yourself, you buy things for your wife. If you do things for yourself, you do things for your wife. But wives, it says wives are to honor and respect their husbands. It's a twofold thing. Husbands love your wives. Wives honor your husbands. Wives, don't pray for your husband. Father, he's doing this, and I want him to stop. He's doing this, and I want him to stop. No, uh, you need to pray this. Father, where can I line up? Where can I line up, Lord, to serve you better? And in that lining up, the love is going to flow. The respect is going to flow. The honor is going to flow. And you're going to see your relationship change. That has to happen that way. You cannot pray about one another, but pray for yourself to God about who you are and whose you are. And when you line up with everything that he has for you, watch what happens to your marriage. Watch what happens to your relationship with your family and with your friends. When you're in that alignment, it's going to change things. Come on. It's going to change things. I love marriage. I love being married. I love being married. My wife drives me crazy sometimes, but that's okay. I love her. I mean, I drive her crazy. I even tell her, and she'll tell me. You just walk away. I'm probably overwhelming at times. She's not. When I pray, I'm like, Lord, change me. Change me so she'll be better. No, because you can't do that. You just change me so I will line up with you. And when she sees that, She's going to go, I want to be like my husband because he's like Jesus. I want to be like my wife because she's like Jesus. That was a good word. Yeah. Bill Johnson does that, so I thought I would. <laughs> yeah, so good. Galatians 5.14 says this. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word, in one statement. 
you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. All these verses are amazing about relationship, about formed relationships and reforming relationships in love, in pure love. However, with all this being said, with the jobs, with the relationships, with the dreams, we've made it about us. We've made it about us. Where can I be happy at? Who can I be most happy with? Where can I be most pleased at? When it's not about us, it's about Jesus. It's not about you. It never has been. It never has been about any one of us, but it's about him because of the price that he paid on Calvary was so great that if you live in a mediocre relationship with him, you're not going to be able to handle what's coming. Jesus died and saved you. It was a plan from the beginning to come to this place. I mean, it wasn't, like, it wasn't like God saying, yeah, we're just going to send you down there and you're going to do it. No, it was Jesus saying, I will go, knowing what was going to happen to me. I will go, and I will take that. And if you think he didn't feel pain, he did. Because he was full God and he was full human, full human. He experienced the very pain that we experience. He chose not to cave under the pain. He chose not to give in to sin under the pain. So if you're barely getting by, we can change that. If you're, li if you're living a mediocre dream, mediocre life, mediocre job, mediocre relationship. So how's your relationship with Jesus? Well, at the beginning, it's like great... Listen, I'm not trying to tear anybody down, but I just want to say that we have to have everything in line with him. No matter what we're doing, it has to be totally, 100% in line with him. I promise when you get there, it's going to change your whole world. I mean, you know, we've got people that are, we got people that are Christians that are doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. They're talking ways they're not supposed to talk. They're watching things they're not supposed to watch. The Bible says don't send no evil thing before your eyes. I'm assuming that's what it means. Don't set no evil thing before your eyes if it says it. What are we setting before us? What are we taking into our bodies? You know, I said last service, I said we don't have to pray about everything because some things just common sense, you just do it. But maybe we need to pray about everything. Maybe we need to pray about that McDonald's cheeseburger when we go get it. Maybe this is not so good for the intake. The Lord's been dealing with me on that. I want you to eat better. I want you to fast more. So that's what I've been doing. Lining up with him. It's not going to happen all at once. But as he shows me, the closer I'm going to get to him, the closer heaven's going to come to earth, the closer relationship I'm going to have with him. That's how it's going to work. Each and every little thing. When you got saved, you know, most of you, when you got saved, you just didn't stop everything immediately. You know? It's a process. But there are things that you're walking in that you know, you know is wrong. And people are watching you. They're watching you, and they know it's wrong. But people are saying, if they can talk that way, if they can watch that, if they can do that and be a Christian, then so can I. So you're going to lead people the right way, but you're going to also lead them the wrong way. Amen. And it's tougher to break someone when you take them that way and they say, well, you did this, well, you did this, well, you did this. When you try to, when you fix it and all of a sudden you're trying to say, well, you shouldn't do that. Why? You did it. And then now you got to deal with all this. Why? You did it stuff. I'm trying to break all those things so nobody can come up to me and say, well, you did this. No, I did not. And if I did, it was years ago and when I was living in sin. Man, it's early. <laughs> not yet. I'm not done yet. God's not done yet.
You guys are going to heaven, right? Great. Great. It's not even just about that. Not even just about that. There are people outside these walls waiting on us. Every single day, there are people waiting on us. There's a little lady sitting on the curb downtown waiting for someone to come up and share Jesus with her. There's a young man contemplating suicide. And you've had a rough life and you've experienced some of those things. He's just waiting for that person to come up and say, hey, I know where you're at, but I know where you can go. I know where you can go. What can help you? Who can help you? And it's Jesus. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful for that. Each one of you have a testimony. You guys all have a different testimony. Mine's different than yours. But yours is going to impact someone's life where mine won't. Darling, your testimony is going to impact someone's life. Some of the stuff that you've been through, some young woman is going to go through the same thing and you're going to be able to comfort her by your testimony where I wouldn't be able to touch it. Tammy, the same way. Tolly, the same way. Kim, all of you, the same way. Mike, same way. Mike, your testimony is going to rock somebody. It's going to change their life. Bobby, your testimony is going to change somebody's life. Keep lining up. Keep getting in line. Ask the Lord, what am I doing that you don't want me to do? What am I doing to my body, to my mind, to our relationship, Jesus? What am I doing? Watch what he does. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. See, he paid the price, and it's beyond more than any one of us would do. What he did on Calvary is beyond more than any one of us would do in a mediocre relationship. But in right relationship with him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So let's stop living in mediocre relationships and start living the one for him. Make it all about the one who loves you most. Jesus, shall we? Amen. So I just feel to release this word. It's Ephesians 14, no, Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. It says a prayer for Ephesians is what it's titled, but I'm going to just kind of decree it over you guys as our body here. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. I know that was intense. That man paid the price for you, the ultimate price, that you could have freedom, that you could be in right relationship. You know where you are. You know what's in your life that needs to line up so you can have a better relationship, a more intimate relationship, a more into me you see relationship where you where you're not afraid to show Father God who you are. You're not afraid to show him That you've messed up. That you've got it wrong. Here and there. See, as we're walking this walk, there's tweaking that we need to do. And I believe in 2021, it's a focused tweaking of making it all about Jesus. 
every aspect of our life about Jesus. No matter what it is. Making it about Him. See, He chose to be here. And He's chosen you. Each and every one of you. He's chosen you. When He paid the price on Calvary right then, when He did that, He was thinking of each and every one of you. And I know that's hard to understand. The serenity of that. The holiness of that. But we're we're not created to understand everything. We're just created to follow Jesus. We're not going to understand everything. There's going to be things that that man are going to go back and forth on, on scriptures. I believe this. No, I believe this. Forget about all of that. You focus on the thing that matters most. That's Jesus. All those things will line up. He'll give you revelations and he'll show you things that it will be a secret between you and him. He showed me things. I love it. I've got some secrets from heaven that I have to keep locked in until he says I can release them. But I love it. It's so amazing to have an inline relationship with Jesus. Knowing that I don't have to waste money on things I'm not supposed to do. Knowing that I could spend money on things I'm supposed to have. Or spend money on people like he wants me to. Living in the right relationship. You know, we talked about the giving earlier. It's so amazing. In right relationship with God, you you, you could try to outgive him, but you can't. It's incredible. I, I literally have... My wallet has a $100 bill in it, for you that don't know this. And every time I take that $100 bill, I I give it to somebody. It's for somebody else. It's not for me. And every time, I mean, I'm I'm talking every time I take that $100 bill out, someone comes and hands me another $100 bill. Just out of the blue. It's happened on airplanes. It's happened in California. It's happened. People just come and just give me the envelope and say, hey, I don't know what this Lord is going to give this to you. I I don't know who you are, but... I guess you're supposed to have this. That's them minding God, and that's me minding God. When we're all in line with that engine and we're running in the right power, doing what he's called us to do, those things are going to happen all day long, every day, in every situation. I promise. It'll happen.